I'm the hardest working guy that, that doesn't talk about it. So basically, I don't take any days off as far as working out. First thing in the morning time is you have to build your confidence. And every day you're constantly gaining and losing confidence. You're never staying the same. So how you build your confidence is if you like what you see in that mirror, that's how you start your day off. If you wake up and you, and you look fat, you look out of shape, you're not feel good, which is, you know, or you don't feel good inside. So my whole big thing is get up and work out, shed some calories, get the adrenals going, get yeah. the mind going, get all that going. Every day I run, every day I work out. A lot of the people, what they do is they have these, these finish lines. And I have a saying that says, I don't stop when I'm tired, I stop when I'm done. When I was uh, younger, I didn't have any goals. It's not really so much about goals, it's just a to-do list, a to-do list. And as a human being, if you don't have a to-do list, you're gonna sit back and just fade away. Your brain is the most powerful weapon in the world. If you can't control your own brain, you gotta tell your brain where you wanna go and how you wanna go and how you wanna get there. You gotta control it. If not, it's over. A good human being, a fulfilled human being, doesn't need to break anyone down. All they do is wanna build you up. So anybody you meet that calls you out of your name, that bullies you, that messes you up, that, that makes you feel not lifted, they are dealing with something deep-rooted. When you quit, your mind says we're done. So it doesn't expand. There's no expansion when you quit. When you say, uh-uh, this sucks, I'm drowning, I'm miserable, I'm suffering, I'm broken, but I'm not going anywhere. What happens to your mind, it says he's not leaving. So we gotta expand, we gotta grow, we gotta figure this thing out. So then these compartments in your brain, they have to work. And then you start to engage parts of your mind that you never engaged before. When you're in suffer mode and you say, I'm not gonna quit. You're forcing your brain now to operate on a level it's not used to, but then it becomes used to it. The only way anything gets accomplished, you gotta work hard. I can't remember what's in this paragraph to pass this test to get in the military. Read again, still not getting it, read again. But if you're not getting it, write it out. And guess what happened? I got it. I can't swim, I'm negative buoyant. Go back again, I can't swim. Go back again, go back again, go back again. I got it. I realize if I keep going back and going back and going back, your mind will say, okay, we're gonna figure it out because he is not going to stop. I always equated working out to struggle. I struggled my whole life, but I ran from it. So I started realizing, man, I gotta start facing the struggle and I gotta be mentally strong for the struggle. I'm training for life. Mentally, I'm training for life. I'm not training for like to, to lift 400 pounds. And I found out on my own pretty much is that through this, through, through discipline, through self-discipline, through repetition, through tons of repetition, the same thing that you don't wanna do, you develop mental armor for your mind. Start to armor your mind, because your mind's like, okay, we suffer, we suffer every day. We do stuff that sucks every day, so then when the suck stuff comes, you're ready for it. I had two options, to either be that 300 pound guy who sprayed for cockroaches and made $1,000 a month, or I can totally just fail and fail and fail until I succeed. So I started calling recruiters up. I said, I'm gonna go be a Navy SEAL. There's a weight and height limit to get in the military. And I was six foot one and 297. He saw me, put me through the weight standard, all this other stuff. And to get into the class I had to get into, I had to lose 106 pounds in less than three months. I was like, I can't do that. I grabbed my chocolate milkshake and went back to Ecolab. And I said, this ain't gonna be it for me. There's a lot of quiet time. I shut out a lot of noise. I only have people in my life that, that need to be there. If you don't need to be in my life, I'm not about acquiring more friends. I'm not about noise. I'm about, okay, are you trying to go somewhere? You can, you can jump on board. If not, I don't want to hear all your problems. Do you have a solution for your problem? That's what I'm all about right now. So I'm not about whining, complaining. I'm about, okay, we need to go this way. I'm big into visualization and also self-talk, but also like, where do I want to be in life? Where do I see myself? And then I start making these plans and how I'm going to get there. And I don't deviate from that plan. Because I realized once I was talking to myself the right way and all this wasn't in my mind, wow. I went from this kid who thought he was dumb, not successful, insecure, who stuttered when I first saw somebody 
to a person who can now do all these things just because I now control my own mind. And I don't care. A lot of people say they don't care. When you get to the point where you really don't care, you become very, very dangerous. I'm not saying don't care like, I don't care if I do that. No, when you don't care about other people and how they view you, mm. about how you walk, how you talk, how you dress, where you want to go with your life. You know, growing up, I didn't want to tell anybody I wanted to be in the military. Because why? Some of my black friends, I was afraid of what they think. You know, why do you want to join the military, man? I was afraid of what other people thought about me. So now, when I go in the military, I know you want to join the military. Yeah, I ain't tell you because I'm afraid of what you thought. Once again, man, you're allowing other people to shackle your mind. It's the worst thing in the world. And what's funny about that, I often say it, on the other side of that extreme place mm. that I call suffering, there's a whole nother world that people have not even examined. But you have to go to that extreme place to examine it. You want to stay here in this comfortable place. Once you're going to push yourself to that extreme place, it's like a whole nother universe. It's almost like, like you're an astronaut and you've examined something like up in outer space. No, it's always been there. But you have to be going through all the muck to examine it. You realize, wow, God, through all this crap, there's a whole nother Whole nother universe over here in my mind. Whole nother universe. I'm training my mind and my body and my spirit so it's all one, so I can handle what life is gonna throw at me because the life I've lived, it throws a whole bunch at you. And if you're not physically and mentally prepared for that, you're just gonna crumble and you're good for nobody. In times of suffering, what we do is we forget how hard we really are. Because that's what suffering is. Suffering is a test, that's all it is. Suffering is the true test of life is now where I'm at today. And that is, when you finally get to that point for me, it's for everlasting peace. Greatness isn't running 200 miles at a time or doing 4,000 pull-ups or being a SEAL. Greatness is whatever the hell you dreamed of in your own mind. You gotta first see it. You gotta first create this vision in your mind. And then that's when I come into play. Once you create this vision in your mind, it's how am I gonna get there now? We're all, we are all great. No matter if, if you think you're dumb, no matter if you think you're fat, no matter if you are fat, no matter if you've been bullied, or no matter if you just got back from Iraq or Afghanistan and you have no legs or your arms or whatever, man, we all have greatness. It just, you gotta find the courage. You gotta find the courage to put your Bose headphones on and silence the noise out of this world and to find it that sets you apart from everybody else. And, and that's what it's all about. I fell back in this hole of life. The second you think that you've overcome it and you climbed Everest, you're on that last hold and life will say, <laughs> not today, and it'll push you down. And it was me against me. My pants were down to my knees. I was just, whatever was going on, I was in a bad shape. So I went to the bathroom and I went to the mirror and the reflection in it revealed a lot of bad things. A lot of things that I was hiding behind the saggy pants. And I'm looking at myself in the mirror going like, God, dog, dude, you, gotta, you are something else, man. Like you have created a character. I want to be at the cool guy table. And whatever I could do to get attention, I did. And it wasn't me. It wasn't who I was inside. But I was scared for anybody to know who I was inside. So in that accountability mirror, I call it, I got real with myself. I was dumb. And people say, oh, you know, you had a learning disability. I had a learning disability, but I realized I was lazy. I called myself out there. I called myself out every which way possible. I didn't call myself out, I was just honest. I was honest. Look at yourself, man. Look at yourself. And it was that day, in a couple of days after that, I just got real with myself. And every day I came home, I called the accountability mirror. What am I going to do today to change what I see in this mirror? What am I going to do today? And a lot of it was, I stopped sitting with the cool guys. I actually tucked my shirt in with the school looking like, hey man, this is how I'm going to look. If you don't like it, so be it. I had to really wear this layer of skin. I had to develop a really callous skin on me to take whatever you're going to call me, you're going to call me. Whatever I'm going to be, you know, I wasn't a geek, but whoever I am, you're going to see me. You're going to see me for who I am because I need to change who I'm not. And that accountability mirror just became raw. 
And when I became fat over the years, I fell back in the hole. I called myself fat because I was fat. And people don't want to do that. They want to say, oh, don't call yourself fat. Don't call yourself dumb. If you're not real and raw with who you are, nothing's going to change. And in this nice new world that we live in, we want to hear, you're just a little big. No, man, you might be fat. And it's okay to hear that from yourself and from everybody else. So that's where it started at. And it's raw. And it gets ugly sometimes of me in the mirror. But I'm also proud of myself to be able to tell myself that and then fix what's in that mirror. So what happened in, in my life was we start to get, I call it like the rucksack. A rucksack is a pack that you carry in the military and you put all your stuff in it. Your radios, your food, your water, all that stuff you have to carry in the military. That's your rucksack. It's a backpack pretty much. As you're growing up, we all have a backpack. Most of ours hopefully is empty, you know, and what we put in it is all the crap we go through in life. That's what is in the backpack for the civilians. And we carry it around with us. So what you have to start doing is realizing that no matter where you're at in life, my dad abused me, you know, learning disability, stutters, immaturity, insecurities, self-doubt, so much crap on top of me. So much stuff. I lied a lot to create friends. So people, were, so much stuff was in my backpack. No one's coming back to help me. So it starts with that person in that mirror. You have to realize you are on your own now. And whatever else you believe in, I don't care what you believe in, but on earth, it's a very lonely journey. And it starts with the accountability mirror, I'm looking at saying, hey, my dad who beat the hell out of me is not coming back. All these things are coming back. I have to face myself. And you have to own all those things that people may have done to you. Now it's yours. You got to own it. It's yours now to fix the problems that people did to you. It makes no sense. It's not fair. I get it. But if you live in that what was me mentality of guess what? My dad did this to me. My mom just did to me. People who bullied did this to me. You're going to always live right there. You have to figure out ways to move forward because you're not coming back. And it starts with the mirror. I call it the accountability mirror in the book. That you can't even explain to people. You have to create the real reality. So that's what I call my accountability mirror in my book. That's the real reality. Where the fuck am I going to start from? So for me, I was lying to this, lying about that. So I had no starting point. Once you come face to face with who you are, you have a starting point. All right. <laughs> I'm not real smart. I have no courage. I have no self-esteem. I have no nothing. Nothing. That's my starting point. Now we can move from there. But if I tell myself I'm strong, I have courage, I'm smart, and all these are lies, you continuously push that starting point backwards. So that starting point is the truth. The no bullshit truth that only you can tell yourself. It gives you a lot of power when you're able to go on a podcast this big and say, hey, Tell me, I'll tell you anything you want to know. I no longer care. There's a lot of power in that. To be able to put your life on a billboard for the whole world to see and say, judge it, man. Judge it. Like just me talking about it makes me feel good. And that's, and that's another thing about it. When you are willing to talk about how jacked up you are, the strength, that big rock that you carry, it just starts to come off you. It just starts to come off. That's why I do it so often. I'm like, hey, man, I'll tell you anything you want to know. I'm tired of being afraid. I'm tired of not telling you. I'm tired of lying about how good I'm not. I learned how to control my adrenals. If you know how you know how you get that fight or flight response when you get to move real quick. Yeah. And you know, I, I started learning the mind a lot how to get myself jacked extremely fast. Like in a horrible environment when everybody's miserable. I learned how to really find strength in the misery. When everybody's suffering, everybody's all poopy pants and their mentality's down and everything, I started just like, my God, this is where I shine. And I started using all that misery for tons and tons of tons of drive and motivation to, to, to then lead people further. Because you can get a lot of power through misery. And once people see that, my God, God is going, then everybody says, Roger that. Let me get my shit and go too. I started realizing that if you can just find strength just a little bit longer, 
you will have a crew of people following you along the way. The second you look at your phone, the second you turn the TV on, you're in a battle. I want to win the war in the morning. If you do something you don't want to do every morning, you're already giving yourself the proper self-talk to attack the people that don't like you, to attack your insecurities, to attack what the world's going to give you. I once had that mentality that no one understands what the f I'm going through. And if you keep that mentality, you're going to stay in the same exact spot that you're in. Everybody's going through sh so when people get this mentality of like, you don't understand me, you can throw a rock to someone that can understand you if they're willing to break themselves down and stop hiding. A lot of people understand you, but you got to stop hiding. And then this guy was in my mind. We suffer. We suffer every day. It's what we do. We do stuff that sucks every day. So then when the suck stuff comes, you're ready for it. And that's how I started coming up. You know, I just started being very uncomfortable. And now I'm, it's like a, just a way of life. What I realized is for me to become the man I wanted to become, I saw myself as the weakest person God ever created. But I never blamed God for anything he did to me. So I wanted to change that to be the hardest man ever created. Am I that? I don't know, but you had to have a goal. I'm not gifted. I'm just driven. So that's when you move from motivation to driven to obsessed. It's how you get through that on a daily basis when we forget how badass we are during that hard time. It's all on you. It's all on you. The self part is what's big. I'm gonna make myself good enough. I'm driven. I'm obsessed. I want to prove people wrong. I'm a warrior. I'm here again today. I'm here again tomorrow. I'm gonna to be here the next day. Thicken your skin. Become more of a human being. Don't be afraid of the reflection in the mirror because that's all you can be afraid of. Once you overcome the reflection in the mirror, you've done it. You're going to have to suffer, man. It's how you get somewhere in life. Motivation is crap. It comes and go as how you feel. So I wanted to change that to be the hardest man ever created. Am I that? I don't know, but you had to have a goal. And my goal when I was sitting there, not going to school, being bullied, being having no self-esteem, my goal was... The only person that's gonna turn this person around is me. I'm training my mind and my body and my spirit so it's all one, so I can handle what life is gonna throw at me because the life I've lived, it throws a whole bunch at you. And if you're not physically and mentally prepared for that, you're just gonna crumble and you're good for nobody. In times of suffering, what we do is we forget how hard we really are. Because that's what suffering is. Suffering is a test, that's all it is. Suffering is the true test of life is now where I'm at today. And that is, when you finally get to that point for me, it's forever lasting peace. Greatness isn't running 200 miles at a time or doing 4,000 pull-ups or being a SEAL. Greatness is whatever the hell you dreamed of in your own mind. You gotta first see it, you gotta first create this vision in your mind, and then that's when I come into play. Once you create this vision in your mind, it's how am I gonna get there now? We are all we are all great. No matter if if you think you're dumb, no matter if you think you're fat, no matter if you are fat, no matter if you've been bullied, or no matter if you just got back from Iraq or Afghanistan and you have no legs or your arms or whatever, man, we all have greatness. It just you gotta find the courage. You gotta find the courage to put your Bose headphones on and silence the noise out of this world and to find it that sets you apart from everybody else. And, and that's what it's all about. You have to create the real reality. So that's why I call it my accountability mirror in my book. That's the real reality. Where the f am I gonna start from? So for me, I was lying to this, lying about that. So I had no starting point. Once you come face to face with who you are, you have a starting point. All right, I'm not real smart. I have no courage. I have no self-esteem. I have no nothing, nothing. That's my starting point. Now we can move from there. But if I tell myself I'm strong, I have courage, I'm smart, and all these are lies, you continuously push that starting point backwards. So that starting point is the truth. Lifting weights, people, like, people don't get it, man. It's not like lifting weights. It's like, you know, we go and do like so many reps, like, People go, oh, you're only doing um, 
was like 90 some pounds on the incline. Do five sets of 25 with a super set of push-ups, super set of curls, super set of pull-ups, super set of triceps. We're going through lifting lightweight, but for massive, massive amounts of reps. And so you're like totally swollen. If you like bench pressing and you bench press all the time, what are you finding out? If you like to swim, that's all you want to do is swim. What are you finding out? People talk about triple down on your strengths. That's the fucking weak in the world. No, triple down on your weaknesses. Find out something about yourself. I want to tell you how you can help yourself get through the times that suck. Real life. This is real life. 90% of your life will suck. 10% will be happy. Is I have the ability to see the end before the beginning even begins. And what that means is I know that to get to the very end, I can see it right now. I saw myself walking across the stage at 191 pounds. That's what I had to get to, to, to get into the door. I saw myself six months, a year later, whatever it's going to take me to do it. I saw myself walking across that stage, getting that certificate of graduation from Bud's. And I was able to be there at 300 pounds. And that feeling that I was nowhere near that feeling. I was able to put myself there a million times every day. And that feeling of like, my God, that is going to feel fucking amazing. That's what made me suffer. I don't enjoy it. It's necessary. It's necessary. So every morning I wake up, it's not just about working out. But for me, working out has been a very big part of my mental growth. So for me, if I am not challenging myself every day, that's where to God. People will not believe it. I was over almost 300 pounds twice in my life. A person that does that twice in his life does not enjoy cardiovascular activity. So people can put anything they want to in their head. I did realize one thing. The things I don't enjoy that I still do, that's where growth is at. And that's, for me, the only place growth is at is in that very uncomfortable zone. So I have to visit it every single day. I realized at a young age how to change myself was through discipline. And the military didn't teach me that. It was something I realized I had zero discipline, zero self-discipline. And I realized I have to start developing this. And I started really because I was horrible at reading and I was horrible at writing. I have so many learning disabilities, not even funny. So I just sit down at the table and spend so much time in this reading and writing and learning. And that kind of translate over to my self-discipline with, with uh, working out. So that's where it started. I started when I was about 16 years old. I said, well, I'm a fourth grade reading level. You know, let me go ahead now and start really uh, focusing because I'm not gonna get in the military because I got passed the test. So that's where it started for me. Each thing that is wrong with you has to be a focal point. You can't look at this gigantic list and say, I gotta change all this, my God, this is crazy. No, you take off the first one. I want to be smarter. For me, that was my thing. I have to, I have to become more intelligent. I have such a severe learning disability. I had to now get that one thing and then strategize in that one problem. How can I do this? I'm not going to learn like you. I'm not going to learn like anybody else. How am I going to figure this out? So I then figured out, okay, where are my strengths here? Where are my weaknesses in learning? All right, man. How am I going to do this? And I figured out a way to do it by just strategizing. So how I learn to this day, if I have a big manual to study, I will have to get a bunch of spiral notebooks from the daggone store. And each page, I have to write each page out maybe 10 times. So there was a thousand page dive manual that I got 18 months before I went to dive school. Most people, I'm not smart, I'm gonna go see if I can pass this test. I realized, hang on a second, I'm not smart. How can I get past this? How can I get through this obstacle? I need to get, I need to acquire this book 18 months in advance because it could take me 18 months to write down each page over and over again to then put it to memory. So when the question came up, I had written that question so many times down in that paper that I can recall, okay, page 71, was where I remember seeing this. And I can recall it that way. And that's how I did it. So you gotta strategize on each problem you have in life. 
slowly break down that problem. Don't think about all the problems you have, just one at a time. And before you know it, you fix all these problems, but you cannot focus on all of them, just on the one thing at a time. People with a talent problem who are so talented, they're hard to train. They're hard to push. If you're their coach and you're trying to get them to see that we got to get you past this talent problem, we got to get you to the point where you're into that mental zone. Because we got to get you way past your talent. And it's, it's hard for coaches to take these fighters or whoever past their talent. And on the other side of that is where they gain true, true levels. The levels beyond talent, that's where it really is. Because if you're able to take a motherfucker down to the deep end, while a motherfucker's just putting his toe in, feeling the water and shit, if a motherfucker's in the deep end, he's able to take you down there and he's mentally strong, it's over. It's over, man. They, because they, cause they live in the deep end. They live in it, man. I always fix the things on the surface. If I couldn't read and write, I learned to read and write. I would always fix these things on the surface level. And so whenever something hard would like raise his ugly head, I didn't have any kind of tools to handle it. I'm like, man, I thought I fixed this already, man. But no, I didn't go deep into the dungeon of my soul to say, okay, what is making you a quitter? What is making you a weak man? What is making you afraid? That's why I kept on quitting and going back to start or not knowing how to get through hard times. And that's why I always tell people, I'm not a theorist. I didn't study, like, you know, I didn't study a book. I literally put myself in a fire repeatedly like a sword. You put a sword in a fire repeatedly and repeatedly. If, if you keep on doing that, you're going to get a nice sword. And then you keep on beating it. You got to beat the shit out of it. <laughs> and that's what I am. Yeah. I, I became that. I, I, I said, okay, we, we can't quit. We got to figure out what is wrong with you? What's going on here? So I kept on putting the sword back in the daggone fire and I just beat it harder. And I beat it harder. Before I knew it, I started realizing, hmm, all right, man. The brain is starting to get hard. The brain is starting to get hard. I'm no longer a theorist. I'm now a practitioner. I put it in hell. I dissected it while it's in hell because you can't dissect anything in a normal environment. You can't dissect anything in 72 degree weather. You must right. put it in the fucking freezer and freeze and then you dissect it. Dissect it when it's miserable. Dissect the brain when all it's thinking about is I need to get out of here, man. I want to get out of the freezer. Open the door. And you said, nah, five more seconds, man. Five more seconds in the freezer. And that's when you start to pick that brain apart. And that's what all this stuff did to me. I kept on putting myself back into the freezer or the fire and beating out of myself, mentally and physically. Before I knew it, this is what happened. I want you to, I want you to go there with me. I'm taking you there with me. I'm, I'm a storyteller. I want to take your ass down paradise. Where I, so the house I lived in in Buffalo, New York, that I got my ass beat every day, funny. We lived on Paradise Road, and it was anything but paradise. So I want you to go there with me. You want to learn from me? Let me take your ass home. Let me take you there. So that's the whole thing about it, man. We're, we're scared to dive into our lives. What made us who we are? The beautiful people that we are, we're all jacked up in so many ways. That's the beauty of us. That's the beauty of me. I'm jacked up, but I figured out my own little process on how to get unjacked up and how to, I'm not gonna get the same, you know, I'm not gonna get the same way you're gonna get there. You may get there by going point A to point B. I might go point C to D to E to F, but I'm gonna be there the same way you are, just a little harder. And that's how I train my brain. So it's just different. I'm just a different, different thinker. Could do five sets to 25 with a superset of push-ups, superset of curls, superset of pull-ups, superset of triceps, superset of, what else was it? I forget what else. It's a superset, man. So we're going through lifting lightweight, but for massive, massive amounts of reps. And so you're like totally swollen. And like, it's just the, 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 some, some, some of the best workouts in the world between me and him. The biggest question I get is, <clears throat> so when do you rest? <clears throat> when do you recover? Yeah. And I don't want to scare people, but the truth answer is, I don't take any days off. No days. No days. Seven days a week. Seven days a week. Well, what is a, a normal day? Normal day for me, a, a normal day. So let's say a light day. Light day. Light day is at least a seven mile run. I will 
every every four every other day, so about four days a week, um, calisthenics plus gym workout. So I don't do any gym workout without hitting pull ups, push ups. I call it nickels and dimes. So like five pull ups, ten push ups, or I'll go you know quarters and whatever. Like it's like twenty five pull ups or in like fifty push ups. So I have all these different things I mess up. So I will do weights with calisthenics, and every single night I stretch. That's what's disappointing for me, for other people. It's not that I want to live there. I know I can go there. And once again, I know other people can go there. So I guess that's the thing with me is is I know I have the ability now to go to a place that's very, very hyper-focused that I can accomplish some pretty amazing feats. Not because I'm amazing, because I allowed my mind to be open-minded for the possibilities of what can I achieve takes the growth in your mental aspect, in your spiritual, everything grows because you start feeling better about yourself. Not many things on the planet make you feel good about yourself, like getting after it, doing something that challenges you mentally and physically every day. You cannot live in that normal mindset. You must be your best on your worst day. And how you do that is you cannot think of a normal mindset. You cannot have a normal mindset. My big takeaway of life is if you're constantly taking the easy way out, you're never going to callous your mind. I was a chameleon living in life who could barely get by. So I know that they were taking the normal mindset of people. They weren't talking about the one percenters, the people who want it like there's no tomorrow. I did 101 miles in 18 hours and 56 minutes. It's the worst pain I can ever be in in my life. I sat in that tub to call my mom up. My mom was dating a doctor at the time. The doctor, the doctor said, you need to get him to a hospital now. So she said, I'm taking it to the doctor. I said, no, let me sit here and enjoy this pain. I never thought it was humanly possible to do what I did. I went 70 miles. And at 70 miles, I was dead. I was at 100% what I thought was 100%. I went 31 more miles after being in the worst physical shape I've ever been in in my life. It was the most amazing moment of my entire life. Your brain is the most powerful weapon in the world. Once you put away your phones and your computers and all that we have nowadays, that's great, we're up to date, but your brain is the only thing you have when you're going through depression, hard times, you're going through death, real life You can't Google that, man. You're alone. You may have the best friend you're going to, but there's 24 hours in a day where you're alone in this brain. It's those times when even the hardest motherfuckers in the world are looking around for guidance. It's that one mother Be that one mother Be that one mother When even you're saying to yourself, boy, this sucks. I don't want to be here right now. Be that guy who finds the courage and say, you know what, man? Let's do this. Let's do this. Even me right now to talk to you, I'm in the car for an hour getting pumped up because I'm a shy, introverted, leave me alone type of guy. I'm still that mother who is six years old, you know, at a play who can't say his line because I know I'm going to stutter in front of five people. So I walk off the stage. That's still me. People think, oh my God, man, you're on a podcast. You look so crazy, so evil. No, I'm trying to be locked into Joe. So my mind isn't very off saying, let's run out the damn door because people <laughs> are watching me on the podcast. I want to open the damn door and get the hell out of here, man. So that's the real me.